Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's episode of Fit Chicks Chat. My name is Laura Jackson. And I'm Amanda Quinn. And on today's episode, we are talking about nutrition. Yeah. Yeah. And we're talking about something that I am like fired up to talk about. Yeah, me I'm, like, too. In the top knot, I'm like, I'm ready. <laughs> so we actually have our holistic nutrition weight loss expert program starting on May 7th. So we've been talking a lot more about different nutritional strategies, and these are things too that we talk about within the program. But um, this is this topic today is something that we are both super passionate about. Um, so we wanted to bring it into the Fit Chicks Chat podcast land and tackle it because I know a lot of people still buy into this idea, excuse me, or use this idea when it comes to trying to follow a quote unquote diet, which is just a nutritional strategy or trying yeah. to, you know, eat healthier or whatnot. And I think it's doing way more harm than good. Yeah. And that is the idea of cheat meals. Well, uh, <laughs> cheat meals suck. <laughs> In <Yeah>. my opinion. <laughs> I'm just going to flat out say it. Cheat meals suck. <laughs> so there's two kind of ways that people end up utilizing this whole cheat philosophy when it comes to either nutritional programming or in their own lives there's usually either cheat meals or cheat days so okay can we talk about that for a second like from a personal perspective uh, all right i'll let you explain it and then i'll tell my story about my cheat meals yeah so there's the cheat meal and i'll i've got lots of stories too that the cheat meal yeah. is that you have yeah. one meal that is going to contain let's say one or more restricted foods that you, so when we say restricted oh, foods, maybe you say restricted foods too, because it's just so like, bleh. yeah, but like, let's use it even an example with right now, let's say the keto diet. Okay. Yeah. I know we've been talking a lot about the keto diet guys. I'm going to preface this. I'm not against the keto diet, but I am not against, I am against a diet though. That does not work with your lifestyle for the long haul that um, you can't stick to, and also that you have a negative emotional relationship with. So if you have that with the keto diet, then it's not for you. But um, so let's say for example, the keto diet. So on the keto diet, it is super high fat. It is super, uh, well, it's medium protein and low carb. So it's like 80% fat, let's say 15% uh, protein and 5% carbohydrates. So with that equation, carbohydrates are, you know, the restricted food on this diet, right? So then during your cheat meal, then you would be introducing more carbohydrates. And it's the same thing though, like a cheat meal, like it could be almost for any types of food or any types of diet, right? Like if you're on, if you're, let's say you are training for a fitness competition and your whole diet that your coach gave you is like a bro diet. So it's chicken and broccoli and brown rice, pretty much every meal. Um, then if you have your cheat meal, suddenly you're eating ice cream. Like it's the whole idea. It doesn't, there's not specific foods that are cheat foods. It depends on the type of diet that you have. Mm -hmm. For sure. So that's a cheat meal. And the cheat day is that you can have the entire day of eating any of those whatever. restricted foods. Yeah. Just whatever you, it's like, it's like the whole idea of a cheat day, I think is like, you just eat whatever you want. Like maybe are still just eat a salad because that's just what you want to eat. But generally speaking, when people build in cheat days, they just no, it's, go. It's built to have the restricted foods. That's the purpose of it. No, no, I know. But sometimes you will just like, I know for me back in the day, sometimes I was just like, oh, like it is, it is my cheat day, but I would still eat certain things that I would normally eat. Cause I was like, oh, I just really want to eat this like protein powder or whatever, you know, like, I yeah. just whatever. but very rare. Because most of the times it was like uh, you look forward to, and I, I want to talk about this from my experience. I would like spend the whole week being so restricted, being like, I didn't eat any carbohydrates. I ate like fake foods from like the natural food store um, to emulate bread and things like that throughout the week. Which is just like eat the damn bread. <laughs> I know, I know now I know, but back then I didn't know. Back then I was like, oh no, I'm eating this sponge bread that was like, it was literally like pebbles. Like when you would like throw it against the wall, it wouldn't like, it would like make like a dent almost Ugh. and like, but it tasted like sponge in the texture. They, I still remember them. They were these buns and they were so expensive too. It was like a box of four of them and it was like $10 for a box. And I would spend hundreds of dollars every single month at this health food store buying all this fake food crap. That's like probably worse for me than the bread, you know, because it was full of so many chemicals and like random crap. Yeah. Anyways, I would spend my whole week eating that way, eating just like, so restricted like 
just protein drinks, like protein powder and water and like veggie dogs with like these fake breads and like eating celery and like ran, like just not eating enough number one and not, and like number two being so restrictive because I knew that I had this cheat day at the end of the week on Sundays was my cheat day. Guys, I would eat so much that like, I would say about 50% of the time I was a server at the time. This is back in the day. I would actually have to call in sick to work or I would eat so much after I finished work. Cause I worked at an Italian restaurant. I would eat like pasta when I was there. I would eat like the gelatos. I would eat like everything when I was there as soon as my shift finished. And then I would go to the store and buy like candy and chips and everything else. And I used to go out on Sunday nights with my girlfriends. And most of the times I couldn't go out because I'd be too full because I would spend the whole day. And sometimes we'd also go to an all you can eat buffet house. And which are just so not a good idea for anyone. We'd spend the whole afternoon, not just like eating a couple plates. We would like literally camp out for like hours because it was me and my friends, um, two of my girlfriends that were doing the same thing. We were all doing a low carb, like low eating diet, I guess. And we would spend the cheat days together just eating and eating and eating and eating till the point where I would throw up. So, and it was like, well, this is where so, like the whole thing is like the idea of cheat meals is like there are, so the benefits of it in a sense, like we take things to the extreme, right? Like, so I have totally. stories too, that it's like, but like, yeah. let's just talk about a couple of like the benefits. So the thing with the cheat meal is that like the idea of it in theory is that it makes the diet that you're on, a, like going on a certain type of diet a little bit more enticing and it makes sticking mm-hmm. to it a little bit more realistic. So for example, let's say if you're going to go on, I did a diet once called the carbohydrate addicts diet. Okay. So it was a low, a low carb diet. It was like in the nineties. I can't even remember who, who did it, but every single day you could pick a 60 minute allotment where you could eat whatever carbohydrates that you wanted to. So for me, I was like, okay, <laughs> this makes this diet more enticing. I'm like, Oh man. <laughs> yeah. This makes this diet more enticing. And of course this makes it more realistic. So I'm like, yeah, for 23 hours a day, I could eat no carbohydrates. And for one hour a day, I could eat carbohydrates. So of course back then too, I didn't have the understanding of nutrition. And when you're reading these diet books, it just sounds like this is like the magic pill, the perfect thing to like get to your weight loss goals. Yeah. So I think what they meant by, you know, an hour to eat your carbohydrates would be like, okay, you could have like a meal that contained, let's say pasta, or you could have a sandwich, like a normal human being. My my clock would go on. I'd be like, okay, 11 to 12 is carb power hour. And I would like, (laughs) and I legitimately would be like, how much food can I eat in the next hour? Because I know in my mind, I can't eat it any other time of the day. So no joke, guys, I probably eat like 10,000 calories within an hour. I could, I would eat a box. Oh. Of food. I could, oh yeah. I could, the thing that when people are like, you can't mess up your diet in one meal. I'm like, yeah, you can. Oh yeah, you can. Oh yeah, you can. Like you can screw up your whole week that's, of progress that's, that's in yes, one meal. You can. Of oh, course. Yeah. I can easily eat 10,000 calories. If you, calories if your meal hour. ends up being like a super, like, like if you think of like the rock, like Dwayne the Rock Johnson with his cheat meals, he is burning though so many calories, and he is such a big, like like mass wise, he yeah. can eat so much more because he is so much, you know, he's got so much more mass than us. But like, if I tried to eat his cheat meal, that would like throw off my whole week. Like that would be like there'd be like calories in there to like cover, like destroy my whole week for sure. That would probably throw off two weeks because in all reality, like we pretty much in a week. Yeah, because his pancakes are like your workouts have barely any. Yeah, and our workouts have barely anything to do with our progress, right? Like our workouts are for the, more of the toning and for the shaping, and yes, for calorie burning. But the majority of your results based on weight on fat loss are going to come from your nutrition. Yeah. So when yes, of course, we still want to be. We don't want to not be working out because we're going to build more lean muscle and keep our metabolism going and really get the shape you want as well. But the nutrition is really all of it. So if during the week, if you're trying to lose a pound, which is roughly 3,500 calories, and you are eating 250 calories less a day, and then working out 250 calories burning, like that over the whole week is 3,500 calories. Do you, like, let's be real here, guys. One McDonald's meal is like, let's say 1,500 calories if you're not drinking regular Coke. Um, 
And I don't know about you, but how full do you really feel off of a McDonald's meal? So how easy is it then to have like, you know what I mean? Like another, like a flurry, which is another thousand calories. So right there in that one meal, you have pretty much like eliminated, all eliminated your, your week. Yeah. Um, if you have not balanced it, uh, balanced it out with the rest of your day. But yeah, yeah, for me, this like carbohydrate power hour, like I would, I couldn't even, I'm not even joking. I probably would have eaten like 10,000 calories. Cause like we also, the thing we have to remember when you're eating processed carbs, things that are popped, puffed, um, chips, crackers, cookies, all these things that are processed, they're already pre-digested. So they literally, you don't need to chew them a lot. They don't take up a lot of space in your stomach, but they're so high in calories. So you can just down those and you're not feeling full and you're not feeling, you know, like, like so much candy, so much, you know, crackers and chips and rice pops and all this stuff. So, but that for me, when we're talking about cheat meal, like that was my relationship with this, like that I thought, okay, this makes like, I can stick to this, you know, I could actually do this diet for the long term. It's realistic. But then I totally abused the whole concept of it. Yeah. The second thing too, is when it comes to cheat meals, yes, they do give you a break from your diet. So like, and the reason why I'm saying this in terms of benefits is that, and we'll talk to you in a moment about the way that we actually look at these, but when it comes to, if you are, let's say in a cut, okay. So when you're in a cut, when you're looking to lose fat, you are going to be in a caloric deficit. There's just no way around it. So when you are constantly focused on, let's say really, you know, being, you know, your portion sizes you're watching and you're being super diligent with like the foods that you're eating and you're making sure that like you're, you're working towards a certain goal. When you're in a caloric deficit though, for a long period of time, you do need to have, um, well, you don't necessarily need to, but it's really good to have a refeed, not only mentally, but also like physically because your body starts to be like, uh, function more optimally on lower calories. We want to kind of give your body a little bit of like a it's almost like a boost. Yeah. Not even like a shock to your system, but it's just like, because we don't, we're not meant to constantly eat the same amounts or lower. Like usually through the week, you should kind of be some days a little higher, some days a little lower. Um, so it does give you a break from that. And then also of course, cheat meals too. If you are someone who has a goal, let's say for fat loss or for muscle building or for whatever it is, but you want to still have a social life, having the idea of a cheat meal is really important because it gives you that whole idea of like actually being able to like have a social life. You don't feel like you're like, okay, I'll use my cheat meal as like I'm going out to the party and I'm going to have two glasses of wine and I'm going to have some snacks and whatever. Yeah. Or I'm going for dinner with my friends and I'm not going to worry about like eating out at a restaurant kind of thing. Yeah. Cause like for me, when I was doing, when I was training for a fitness competition, um, that was the thing that was the hardest thing for me was that I literally had to cut off my entire social life because the idea of being out and being around food, because I didn't have a cheat meal built in to my program, um, mm-hmm. not for a period of time was that I literally had to stop doing all of my social. Like I, I remember going for brunch and sitting and everyone, I remember that. And I was having a cup of tea, a peppermint tea. And I was just like, so miserable. I'm like, I don't even want to be here. Like, because for me as well, though, I never should have done a fitness competition because my relationship already with food, hence the carb power hour has already been so <laughs> negative for such a long period of time that I it's, not, power. <laughs> yeah, it's not good for me to be doing these types of things. But, um, that's one reason though, why for like, you know, whether you're doing it, if you have a really hardcore goal, like a competition, or if you're just someone who really wants to lose 20 pounds and you still want to incorporate in, there's ways you can do it without having this black and white. Yeah, for sure. So what is like, what is the number one solution for avoiding like, you know, the crazy cheat weeks or cheat days, cheat weeks. (laughs) It could be a cheat week too. If you're on vacation. Imagine if I had like, (laughs) If I, well, I just got married in Mexico and it was so crazy. I came back and I actually had lost weight. I've never lost weight in an all-inclusive before. It was like, you're also probably like so busy, like with your wedding and everything else. But I also think too, one of the things was I don't have that same mentality anymore of this, like all or nothing. Do you know what I mean? Like, whereas before it would be like, oh my God, it's all-inclusive and it's, they have buffets and you can order whatever you want. And so I'm going to have 85,000 things of everything. You know what I mean? Like I'm going to eat like every dessert. Because yeah. everyone, I just want to try a bite of every single one. Because guys, bites do add up. <laughs> yeah. Even though you don't want to. 
But so, so what do you think then? Like, what is the alternative then to cheap days? Cheap, I'm going to say cheat weeks just because they do happen um, or cheat meals. Well, I think the first thing is, and we have a strategy that we use at FitJix. We teach this to our students. Um, but the first thing I just want to say though, first is like the idea of eating off your plan or, you know, enjoying foods at a social event and all these things, it's not a negative thing. And this is something that we have to get out. And this is why I have such an issue with the idea of cheat meals and cheat days. And the, it's the word cheat. That's what I hate the most about it. Yeah. Because the whole thing well, is like good food, bad food. Like exactly. That. Like it's the, it's the way that we have programmed our brains to think that it's like that everything is either a positive or a negative. Like, and it doesn't have to be that way. It can just be food. And well, just, and, and the word cheat too, like think about the word cheat over history. Like it's had such a bad, like you cheat on a test, you, you know, yeah. you're sneaky, you cheat on your husband or your wife. They're like, all of these things are such a negative connotation around the word cheat. So as soon as you say cheat meal, now you've just said that meal is a bad meal. It's a, you're doing something bad. Right. And then typically what ends up happening when we do things that are bad is then we feel guilty, mm -hmm. which guilt is like the most I, it's the hardest thing to get people over when it comes to their relationship with food. I know for me, it was like, I had felt guilty about everything. Like food was my enemy. Exercise is my punishment. I always say that. Like I yeah. felt guilty about everything I ate with food. Any food events would cause me anxiety. Having to go to places where I, where other people were preparing my meals. Like I look back and I think about that time and it's so insane for me to think about what that felt like. You know what I mean? Like how everything was so good or bad, black or white, healthy, unhealthy, you know, clean, dirty, like whatever the words are that we, as human beings, we need to put things in categories because it helps us make sense of it. Right. Like if I'm on the plan, I'm good. If I'm off the plan, I'm bad. Like, yeah, it helps us kind of process it. I'm having, what, a, day. I'm having a bad day. Like, yeah. My, with my workouts or whatever, with my plans. Yeah. No, it's so true. We always just have to like categorize it. And it's like, it doesn't really have to be that black and white. No. And, and the beautiful thing is when you can get to that place where you see there is no good or bad, everything's the same. There mm -hmm. is more nutritional choices and more non-nutritionally dense choices. And that's kind of what I talk about a lot in the holistic nutrition weight loss expert program. I'm like, yeah. I wish there was a sexier way I could say this, but I'm like, when I talk about food, <laughs> I talk about, am I focusing on foods that are nutritionally dense or am I focusing on foods right now that are non-nutritionally dense? And there's a time and a place that you can have either or. But you know what I mean? Like, it's like most of the time I want to feel, feel my body with things that are nutritionally dense. And then that gives me room to have things at times that aren't. But I also think it's the whole idea with cheat meals too. Not only is it such cheating, is such a negative word, and it brings so many emotions up in us, especially as women, because we're always taught that we have to be, you know, we're good and we're people pleasers and we don't do bad things. And you know what I mean? Like, so there's a lot of secrecy that comes along with that. And I knew that with my eating disorder and with the way that I was dealing with food, there was a lot of binging in secret. There was a lot of like, I want to see that I was always a good girl and I was sticking to the plan. And I was always, you know what I mean? Like if I said I was going to yeah. do something, I was going to do it. Like, so I just think that it also builds up this idea of like, there's secrecy around it. There's negativity, there's guilt. And then also you start living for them, right? Like you were saying, you're like, I would wait all week. And then this buffet, it was like, I can't live my life until I get to go to the buffet. And then you're like, oh, yeah. and, and then, then I go to the buffet. And then, and then the worst part was, is that you would just feel, I would feel so freaking terrible when I left that buffet that I usually would either be like barfing or I'd be like, and not intentionally, like it just, I would eat that much that I would throw up or I would be like almost like passing out, like on the sidewalks, like yeah. literally that's how much food I would eat. And then I couldn't function for the rest of the day. So that day was like a write-off because it was just like, I ate too much. I ate too much bad, like garbage food. <laughs> I'll say garbage. It really was garbage food. Like it was just food that was not feeding my body in any way other than just filling the gap. And then, yeah. And then the rest, and then for like about a day or two after I would feel guilty. I would feel bad. I would feel physically nauseous. Just, yeah. Well, and that's where, you know, we still live in a world and I find this so interesting is that when people are, let's say addicted to drugs or addicted to, um, alcohol, because there's such a clear, like you can tell when someone has consumed too much booze or has like is high. Right. 
it really alters your state. Like you're inebriated or you're high or whatever. And then we can also relate to that being like, that's such a harsh, painful addiction, but there's still this like misunderstanding about food addiction, about food relationships, about, you know, how we can food utilize, yeah, food, like how we, even if you're not anorexic or bulimic or orthorexic, which orthorexic is the um, obsession with healthy eating, which is a new one. Now people, yeah. if they don't eat healthy foods, it sends them into like a craze. Um, unless you have those types of addictions, there's still such a misunderstanding. It's like, get control of yourself, get more willpower. What, like, you don't need to go to the buffet and eat 5,000 things. But because we've created these like yeah. such negative, like, mindset and it is the same as having an addiction to heroin or it is to alcohol it releases the same dopamine in our brains it causes the same addictive patterns like if you watch someone who has a disordered eating pattern like i don't know about you but how many times have you ever gone to the store and like no one's home and you go and you get like a tub of ice cream and a bag of chips and like a ton of stuff and you eat it all alone on your couch like all in one sitting and then you hide the containers and you, you know what I mean? Like you don't want people to know how much you ate. Like you're embarrassed by it. Yeah. That, that is something that a lot of people do. Like how many times are you like, oh, I'm on the diet. And then you're at the drive-thru and you don't tell anybody. Like there's all this secrecy and we've got to stop doing that. We've got to stop. I remember, I remember like there was a time when I went to a drive-thru and I was so embarrassed about the amount of food I was ordering that I made sure I ordered everything as combos so that they thought that the food was for some like for like a family yeah but it was all for me I didn't drink all the drinks I ate all the food but I didn't drink all the drinks and like this was like that's disordered eating and I sat there in my car and I ate it this is when I lived with you and I sat in my car and I ate it all by myself yeah and then I came home <laughs> yeah. and I was like why did I do that? But it was like, I was so ashamed about it that I didn't want you to see it. And then I didn't even want the stranger at the drive through to judge me or think that there was like that. I wanted him to think, cause I was alone in the car that I was like, Oh, buying it for someone else. Cause that's why totally. I have all these drinks. And, and I was like, I don't need all these drinks, but it's like, it's such an emotional thing. But so many people do it. And so many, yeah. you know, so many, and especially women, you know, we tend to have a more emotional relationship with food because of course there's this whole idea that still to this day, no matter, even though we see more body diversity, that women still feel that we have to be skinny. How many women would you ask if they could change one thing in their life? They'd want to say, I want to lose 20 pounds. Like there's so, it's still such a huge thing. So there's a lot of shame. There's a lot of guilt. There's a lot of secrecy. And that's why with cheat meals, I just find that it is, it feeds into that mindset. Whereas, mm -hmm. yes, if you, of course, if you're looking to reach a goal of fat loss, right, you do have to eat more nutritionally dense foods. You yeah. have to eat less at times, but you can still have, you know, the foods that you really enjoy that aren't as nutritionally dense without this guilt and shame. But it starts, we got to get rid of this whole idea of cheating because then it, it just keeps perpetuating this like good, bad black white. Yeah. Like I, and that's something that I know for me, as soon as I get into that in my mind, like as soon as I'm like, I'm not doing something, I'm like the crazy person who like wants to do it like 5,000 times over. If I'm like, I'm not drinking wine for a month. Yes, I could do it. The first thing though, I wake up the next day and I'm suddenly now thinking I want to drink a glass of wine with lunch and I never drink at lunchtime. Do you know what I mean? Like, but those yeah. are the things, as soon as I put something as off limits, it's like, Oh, I want it every day. All but that's day. so, but that's so common, right? Like that's so common for people to feel that way. It's like, as soon as I get, like, as soon as you put restriction on immediately, you want to rebel against that restriction. Yeah. And so it's like, can we just stop restricting ourselves and just start thinking about it? Like you said, from a perspective of like, is this fueling my body? Is this nutrient dense? Or is it something that is just kind of like, I'm just craving it. I just want to eat it, whatever. But just trying, if your goal is to reach fat loss or to reach weight loss or any of those things, you have to be consistent and you have to know. Okay. Sorry there guys. We got paused for a second or cut off. Darn <laughs> internet. Um, yeah. And I totally, I mean, that's one thing Amanda, you and I have talked about for years and years. And one of our goals is always to try to try to educate women in a way about nutrition, about health, about fitness, about weight loss, but in a way that is coming from a positive place and not, I mean, we had someone on social media post that how could you talk about weight loss and be body positive? I'm like, you can still love your body while you want to be healthier or make changes to it. It doesn't, yeah. again, it doesn't need to be black or white, this or that. And that's the one thing that fires me up is it's like, 
we can still, you know, want to change and still love who we are just because you, yeah, like just because I want to work, maybe I want to, you know, build and help thousands of women. So I hate myself until like my business, until I get to that place. No. No. So no, 100, I 100% agree. You know that like it's, it doesn't, you want to like, you not even want, you have to love the journey regardless of where you want the end, the end result to be. You have to, you have to love where your body is regardless of if you're not at the goal that you want to reach, but you can still like, you can still have goals. You don't have to just stay stagnant. No. And that's where, so the whole thing with, and I know guys, we kind of went on the emotional rant around this because this is something like still to this day, it like really, you know, I can see my own behaviors when I start to go into a bad relationship with a type of food or with myself or, you know what I mean? Like, and I, I now have the tools to pull myself out of it. But I know for a lot of you, it's like, you're still on these programs where like, you feel if you don't follow it to the letter or you have a cheat meal and it feels this like all or nothing mentality, it really makes you feel horrible about yourself. And it doesn't make the journey of getting to your goals fun. So you don't want to do it. So one thing, and this is the strategy that we teach that you guys can start to incorporate. It's something, instead of calling it, and it's more to me even, well, there's a few things to it. Number one is that it's the name. So we've changed the name. <laughs> yeah. And number two, it's about still keeping structure to it. So basically what we call it at Fit Chicks, instead of a cheat meal, that you can incorporate structured flex meals into mm. your, into your week. Now, what this does, of course, it, it's structured flexibility. So you're exactly. not going to have that feeling of like, oh my gosh, it's my power hour, my carb power hour. And I'm going to like <laughs> literally 10,000 calories. I'm going to eat this entire bag of cookies on top of spaghetti. Yeah. Kind and of. as you're watching the clock time down and you're like, oh my God, I got six minutes left. What else can I get in? Well, <laughs> because you know, at the end of the hour, it all magically, like it won't turn to fat after the hour. Anyways. Um, but <laughs> so this way you've got the structure. So you still feel like you have guidelines to kind of follow. So, you know, you're like, okay, this is my flex meal. So I'm still going to be in line with my plan. I've got some structure that I can build it around and I'm still going to be then in line. It's not going to blow my goals because I'm going to have my flexible foods, but I'm not going to, it's not going to throw off my whole plan. So the whole idea of the structured flex meal is that we like to visualize a plate. Um, I know some people, they don't like this, but it just kind of gives you something if you're not eating on a plate. I had someone ask me that once. They're like, well, what if I'm not eating on a plate? And I was like, well, just visualize your bowl or your, you know, whatever, your nap platter, <laughs> whatever it is, <laughs> whatever it is. <laughs> but the whole thing is, so look at your plate and automatically whatever you're eating, think, visualize, and let's just use lunch, for example, because this will make it a lot easier. Um, let's say, or dinner, let uh, visualize your dinner plate. Think of it cut in half. So half of it you want to fill with low glycemic vegetables. So not starchy vegetables, not, um, not vegetables that are, you know, like deep fried, like potatoes, like low glycemic vegetables. So all of the watery vegetables, broccoli, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, cucumber, salad, whatever it is, the watery vegetables. So that of course is going to make sure that number one, you're going to feel really full. Um, then the other quarter of your plate, so your plate split in half on the other side, the other quarter is protein. So something protein rich. So let's say it's chicken or fish, or you're going to have a steak that night. Um, and then the other quarter is going to be for your favorite or for your flex foods. Okay. So something that you don't normally include in your plan. So let's say you are a big wine aficionado. I'm not one, but I love drinking wine. So <laughs> I would do, for example, half my plate. So I'm going to work wine. That's going to be my flex food. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to do, you know, protein is going to be a steak. I'm going to do a whole bunch. I'm going to do asparagus and a salad and all this stuff. And then I'm going to incorporate in two glasses of wine. And that's going to be, I'm not going to put them on my plate, but that's going to fill <laughs> that other quarter. Or you could say you're going to have like, let's say you're having chicken and roast broccoli, and then you're going to do a small piece of cheesecake visualize it though. Don't go into it as without any structure, visualize it as that portion. But always, if you get your veggies in guys, it's going to make such a difference because you're going to have all the nutrients you need to push away all the cravings. Um, and then you're going to have some room to have that piece of cheesecake or the wine or whatever it is. But the idea of the cheat meal, we have to get away from where it's like all or nothing. 
Mm -hmm. because this will set you up not only for mental failure, but for your goals failure too. Mm -hmm. No, 100%. And, and it's just, I like the idea of like looking at it from like, it's a quarter of of the size of your plate as a maximum, because then it's like, you know, that you're not going to fit the whole cheesecake doesn't fit on your plate. So no, you can't eat the whole cheesecake, but at least it gives you still a taste of what it is that you really, really are craving or wanting. So then you're not feeling that restriction and you're not feeling like, okay, well, I'm not going to eat the cheesecake. I'm not going to eat the cheesecake. And then all of a sudden you're like, I'm eating the whole cheesecake. (laughs) Well, and what ends up happening is if you still focus on to having the protein and the veggies during your meal, because protein is so satiating. um, And of course our like low glycemic vegetables add the bulk. What ends up happening is your stomach automatically, you're going to feel so much fuller. You're going to hit the stress receptors. You're going to hit the nutrient receptors. The message is going to go to your brain. I've got all of this. So when you do have that higher glycemic carbohydrate or whatever it is, your gummy bears, or, and again, you don't have to actually pour them on your plate, but just like a package of gummy bears or whatever your thing is that you want to have during your meal, then your your body is already going to feel like satiated. So you're not dealing with those cravings because the cravings are the thing that will get you. And when you start eating more carbohydrates, your blood sugar is spiking, which then causes an insulin rush, which then causes a crash which makes you crave even more and more and more. And that's why most people who eat high carbohydrate, high glycemic, they end up in this constant feeling like they're ravenous or like ripping off the cupboards to get inside to eat something because of these, these highs and these crashes. Mm -hmm. But as you have the protein and the veggies, you're going to make sure your blood sugar is stable. So when you do have that smaller amount of thing, that's going to, you know, spike your blood sugar a bit, it's not going to do it to the extreme. If you just sat and said, okay, my cheat meal is going to be a bowl of pasta, five cookies, a piece of pizza, like nothing that has any proteins or fats to start to slow down or the bulk that's going to fill you up. Agreed. And then how often, so just to be clear for our listeners, how often do you recommend that people use this style or this approach, say on a weekly basis? Because you don't want to be doing this with every meal. Like you don't want to be like this flexible... With like breakfast, lunch, and dinner, having like, oh, I'm gonna eat, you know, the veggies, the protein, and then gummy bears for breakfast, lunch, and dinner every day. Because then you'll still, you'll still be maybe better off than if you had like a full day of just like Mm -hmm. power hours every day. But if your goal is to, you know, have weight loss or fat loss or anything like that, how often would you recommend that people use this as a tool, or is it just when the cravings sort of come and just really honor honor that? I personally think, well, number one, it depends on what your goals are. Of course. Um, And not saying that if your goals are super lofty, like I really want it, like if you're training for a fitness competition, obviously that would be a different situation. But let's say you're, you're looking to, you know, lose weight and you're already working out. Like it depends on your current program and what your goals are. Mm -hmm. But um, I always say that any type of flex meals should not be really introduced until at least after two weeks because we need compliance first, right? And a lot of people, when you're starting on a plan, if you feel like you have certain trigger foods or that, you know, you're still learning how to eat, you know, the complete and three, or you're trying to learn how to, to, um, eat the low glycemic vegetables or what they are, or whatnot. We don't want to be throwing in things that are going to take you off of like the compliance of the plan. So I always say like, if you're, especially if you're new to doing a nutritional plan or you're working on different habits after two weeks, and you have to be compliant during the week. So like if you have stuck to your plan during the week, then build in, you know, pick the day that maybe it's Saturday night is your night that you go out for dinner with your partner or your girlfriends or, you know, your kids or whatever. Mm-hmm. Or maybe Sunday mornings is the, you know, the big brunch that you do. Pick something though that works with, like I always think most social too, that you enjoy the most. I shouldn't say that you enjoy the most because you want to enjoy eating healthy. You shouldn't feel like you're living for that meal, but something that, you know, again, you know that on Saturdays you go out or Sundays you spend time with the family. But I always, before you start adding in flex, if your goal is fat loss, then what I would do is make sure that you're at least two weeks compliant. If your goal is not fat loss and you're just trying to eat like then, you know, maybe you have one or two flex meals during the week. If that is where you know that you can stay, uh, you can maintain at. Um, but as long as the majority of the time you're eating your nutrient dense, you know, complete and three focusing on that the majority of the time. Mm-hmm. But I would say one a week if your goal is fat loss. 
Awesome. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, chicks. So that's it. We're going to wrap it up. Please right. do not take our advice and I mean, not our advice. Please do not go <laughs> do the carb power hour. Please take our advice and don't do it. I know yes. it sounds like the best diet of all time. Please do not go and do that. And <laughs> please do not go eat at buffet houses till you pass out or throw up. <laughs> no. The main goal here, guys, is not only, of course, to get you to your goals, but to have a long-term healthy relationship with food and something you can do for the long term. And I know this is, in the health world, it's something that still does not sound sexy because we still want quick fixes. You know, the weight loss industry would not be a $66 billion industry in the States if that people didn't still want quick fixes because that's the Nutrisome shakes and the diet pills and all these things that are so fast. But in all reality, the only thing that truly works is something that you can do for a lifetime. Yeah. And the people who have gotten the results that you want or that you've seen online or that you're like, oh my God, I want her body. It's consistency and it's something that they can stick to. So you have to make sure that like, this is why I love this concept of getting more structure, but getting out of the cheat meals because this way you can find things that will work that will stick with, for the long time, for the long haul. Exactly. Okay guys, so we're gonna wrap this up. Uh, if you love learning about this stuff and if you want to become a certified holistic nutrition and health coach, please make sure to check out fitchicksacademy.com. We have our holistic nutrition weight loss expert certification starting May 7th. This will be the last one for a long time. Um, we are closing doors, of course, throughout up until the fall. So you want to make sure you jump in on this. You can check it out at fitchicksacademy.com. Also, we've got a ton of um, really great stories from our grads. We're doing amazing things with it. So we would love for you guys to, uh, to check out the program, join us in an info session and see if it's a fit for you. And then if you have anything too that you want us to talk about, make sure you hit us up at uh, info at fitchicks.ca via email or DM us on Instagram at fitchicksacademy um, because of course we love hearing what topics you guys want us to talk about and that way we incorporate them in. Okay guys, have an amazing day. No carb power hours. <laughs> talk to you later. Bye. Bye.